Hey guys, how's it going? I'm your host, Jared Bronstein, and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. Make sure you click that subscribe button and of course that bell as well, so you can be notified when we post more videos. As many of you know, the follow-up videos to some of our questions are made up of one of the hosts replying to some of their favorite comments from the original video. That is the case today, as I will be replying to some comments you guys left us over a year ago in the video titled, What if the Titan of Boa Snake didn't go extinct? If you've yet to watch that video, I'd highly recommend you do so. It was narrated by my good friend and co host, the lovely Charlotte Dobre, and it's quite an interesting video you don't want to miss. In this video, however, I'm not only going to be responding to some comments pertaining to the information in the video, but really any comment that piqued my interest in general. This is also why we recommend you guys leave us comments below on our videos. You never know when you'll get a feature. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up as well. And starting us off here is a comment from Rogelio Caro, who wrote, can you imagine when we go extinct, then a few thousand years later, a future species makes a video about how if we didn't go extinct. Thankfully, humans went extinct. Oh, I have absolutely no doubt it will happen. We're literally destroying our home. And as humans, our main instinct, of course, is survival. But many of us live for pleasure. That's why we don't think twice about our diet, the radiation coming from our cell phones, or the Wi-Fi around us at all times, and how majority of us behave in ways we know we shouldn't. A good example would be using drugs and alcohol to cope with things. Not to say everyone does this, but I think at one point or another, we've all fallen under one of these categories. I know I have. To say the world would be a better place without humans, while as tough as it is to say, I think it's true. We're at the top of the food chain. So we go into nature and just take what we want because we can. Fish, animals, even trees and plants for things ranging from medicine to furniture. As a race, we're quite wasteful, but hey, I'm not here to lecture anyone to stop using straws or go vegan. I eat meat all the time, sometimes multiple times a day, and I like straws. I mean, I'm only going to be here, hopefully, for at least another 70 years, so I'm just as much part of the problem. But is it really my problem or my future children and grandkids' problem? And if they're watching this, I'm sorry guys. But this one's on you. Love you. Black Viper Gaming BVG said, If Titanoboa didn't go extinct, Steve Irwin would have hunted one down and then kissed it and called it a beauty. So when I read this comment, I literally laughed out loud and told the entire studio about this comment when I first saw it because I thought it was genuinely that funny. Maybe it's only funny if you watch Steve Irwin growing up, but the man literally said this about every single animal, regardless of how dangerous it was. And let me say, his love and passion for animals was like no other. The day I learned of his passing, I was truly heartbroken, but to say the man died doing what he loved couldn't be more accurate. Either way, I couldn't agree with this comment more because that man was fearless. Noble X wrote, title, what if the Titanoboa snake didn't go extinct? Me. Then they'd still be alive today. Roll credits. Based off of this comment, I can tell you're the kind of person to buy a scratch off lottery ticket and not actually play the game to scratch the barcode part and scan it to see if you won or lost. There's really no fun in that, is there? I mean, sure, if you win, it's fun, but the whole point is you're playing a fun scratch-off ticket game. If you're going to just scratch the barcode off, you might as well just get a regular lottery ticket. To bring it back to our video, why watch a video explaining the repercussions of an extinct animal living in today's society when you're just gonna be satisfied saying if they didn't go extinct, they would be alive? Now I get it, I'm sure you were making a joke and it's not that deep, but I just thought it'd be fun to poke fun too. Taco said, I'm sorry, today's Tuesday, so I gotta say, talk. Go Tuesday! Taco said, I personally find snakes cute. I have a ball python and a boa constrictor. So I find that's the case with most people. It's either a love or hate kind of thing. I don't think I've ever met someone who's indifferent about snakes. I mean, I wouldn't say I hate them, but they make me uncomfortable. My brother has a corn snake and a ball python, so growing up, I was in a house with two of them. I got used to the ball python being on me, and my fear, I guess you could call it, somewhat went away. But still, when he feeds them mice or rats, it's quite the sight to see. My brother used frozen rodents because he didn't want the poor things to be eaten alive if they didn't have to be. But for the snakes to eat, he'd have to shake the frozen dead rat or mouse for the snake to strike. The way these things would literally stalk their prey and then at the snap of a finger jump at it with a bite while wrapping its body around, much like the Titanoboa, it really freaked me out. I get that's how they do their thing, but still, trying to get a snake off you could be hard, even if you're way bigger than it is. As you pull it off you, its body gets straightened out of course, but that makes it even harder to get it off you because your limbs are only so long. And usually a full grown snake is longer than your arms can stretch out. I mean, depending who you are, of course. I think I'll just stick with pet dogs as my favorite. Will Schaefer said, someone created dinosaur noises without ever hearing them. Buddy, you literally just ruined my day. <laughs> I'm not joking, man. I haven't stopped thinking about this comment since the moment I read it. Seriously, how do we know what dinosaurs sound like? And who was the first person to claim to know what they sounded like? And I also want to know, when that person determined that dinosaurs sounded a certain way, why was everyone else like, oh yeah, totally, no, that's right. Like, did nobody think to question it? Who made this decision? This is absolutely absurd. 
And on that note, guys, we're going to wrap this one up. Don't be surprised if you guys see a video on our channel soon asking, how do we know what dinosaurs sound like? And don't worry, Will, I'll shout you out again in that video too. I mean, you didn't really ask the question, more so made a statement, but it made me ask the question, so I'll give credit where credit's due. Because I'm genuinely curious now how we know what dinosaurs sounded like. To determine this. As always, if you guys enjoyed this type of video, you got to let us know by giving us a good old thumbs up. Of course, drop us some comments down below with a question you'd like answered. And you got to make sure that you are subscribed and ring that bell notification. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys have been watching Life's Biggest Questions. Feel free to connect with the entire LBQ team on social media. The links are right down in the description below. And we'll see you guys soon.